A true sense of self-esteem never comes from a false sense of achievement. The work of Paul Black and Dylan William in 1998 basically kicked off what I'm going to call the Assessment for Learning movement. And it's a movement. It's a movement. It's about recognizing the potential of assessment not merely to measure learning but to improve it. And so if you want to go to the source, if you like, read the article Inside the Black Box, published in 1998 by Paul Black and Dylan William. They set out to answer the following research question. They said if we look at research studies from many countries around the world, and we ask this question, what practices lead to the greatest gains in student learning? What will we find? They looked at more than 400 studies, K to 12 boys and girls. And what came out over and over and over again were the following findings. Kids' learning improves through feedback, not scores. Secondly, kids need to be involved in the process. They need to be active learners and involved in the process. They need, for example, when they get work back from you, to engage in discussion about, so what do, I go, what do I have to do to fix this and make it better? They cannot be passive. So let's not kid ourselves. EQAO can monitor achievement, measure achievement, but the kids don't get to talk to the marker. So on that criterion, those EQAO tests are assessments of learning, not for learning. Next. Effective teachers are constantly gathering assessment data on the fly and using it to adjust instruction for the whole class, for individuals, or for groups. I taught it. You didn't get it. So I'd better not just say, too bad, we're moving on, which goes to, if we're not simply going to say, too bad, moving on, how do I manage time? We'll talk about that before we finish today. This one is critical. The connection, particularly for struggling learners, between what I call grading shorthand Rubric levels, letter grades, percentage grades, and how kids feel about themselves. Think about this particularly the last time you returned a piece of work to kids, perhaps this very school year. How many kids getting back a piece of work from you, seeing that they've got a poor or failing grade, whether that's a rubric score, a letter grade, or a percentage. How many of them seeing, oh, this is terrible. I'm going to try so much harder next week. <laughs> yeah, right. I hate Cooper, I hate French, and I quit, is probably the more likely response. If we have a single kid responding in that way, then we are not going to get the desired effect of the grade, are we? What's the solution? We give them all A's. Of course not. Of course not. I worked in a provincial school for kids with learning disabilities in Milton, the Trillium School. That is a residential school that kids came from all over the province. We were their last best hope. Please, Mr. Cooper, help us read, help us write, because we know that once we get out there, we're not going to succeed if we don't have those skills. An awful lot of those kids got to where they were because they were socially promoted for trying hard. I can tell you the kids we work with in that school, a true sense of self-esteem never comes from a false sense of achievement. Let me say that again. A true sense of self-esteem never comes from a false sense of achievement. Kids know when they're being lied to. So it's not about giving them all A's. What it is about is replacing an awful lot of the grades and scores with feedback. Because feedback always begins with what the kid did well. You mean I did something right, Mr. Cooper? Yes. Now let's talk about where the problems are and how to fix them. For struggling kids, feedback is a much easier pill to swallow, and it's probably going to keep their attitudes positive in terms of learning as opposed to the score. It's just affirming what they suspect. I'm stupid in French. And finally, kids need to be able to assess themselves and their peers. This is not a frill that goes on in elementary school. Fundamental to the research that Paul Black, Dylan William, and many others have done since is that if you truly want kids to become objective, autonomous assessors and adjusters of their own work, they have to have experience doing it. Because, of course, if that isn't a life skill, I don't know what is.